I'm Ellis Martin. Join me now for a conversation with Michael Rowley, the president and CEO of Stillwater Critical Minerals, trading on the TSX Venture Exchange as PGE, in the U.S. on the OTCQB as PGEZF, and in Frankfurt as 5D32. Stillwater Critical Minerals is a mineral exploration company focused on the development of high-quality platinum, palladium, nickel, copper, cobalt, and gold exploration assets in top North American mining jurisdictions. The company's core asset is the Stillwater West Project, adjacent to Sabanier Stillwater's high-grade PGE mines in Montana. Stillwater Critical Minerals also holds the high-grade Black Lake Drayton Gold Project, adjacent to Treasury Metals Development Stage Goliath Gold Complex in Northwest Ontario and the Cluane PGE Nickel Copper Cobalt Project on trend with Nickel Creek Platinum's Well Green Deposit in Canada's Yukon Territory. Michael Rowley has over 25 years executive experience in the exploration, mineral testing, and mine environmental industries, including capital markets and operations. One of Stillwater Critical Minerals founding shareholders and directors, Mr. Rowley is active in additional publicly traded companies, including fellow Metallic Group member Granite Creek Copper. Mike, welcome back to the program. It's been a very long time since you've been on. Why have you been avoiding me, sir? Nothing personal at all. Very glad to be back. The retail market space has not been there. And I view this as being a relaunch of sorts of our connection and the fraudder mark. You make an excellent point with regard to mining in general and junior stocks. They've not done very well for investors, I would say, in the last one to two years overall. However, and this is great in May when most people go away, typically, or in June for that matter, we've seen a definite upswing in critical minerals and critical metals, nickel, copper, cobalt, PGEs. We've seen that upswing, and you, in this market, have a district size project with Stillwater West, a South African size project, as a matter of fact. And I think our audience needs to become reacquainted with it, Mike. So your turn. Oh, thank you. Yeah. We are the largest nickel resource in an active U.S. mining district. That's the headline value. Within that, we have grade. We have high grade within mid grade, within bulk tonnage grade. And that's an important distinction. And then we've got a total of nine of the commodities that the U.S. is listing. It's critical. And the IRA Act and things like that are driving the important distinction in geopolitics now in metal supply. And I'm sure we can touch on that as well. It's the right time to be doing what we're doing. The interest in the junior space, the move in the venture index was good to see in the past few weeks. I think it's taken a step back as of right now, but that's healthy. We need to see a lot more of that. Peter Grandish said this is the most vicious bear market he's seen in 40 years. I think that's accurate. The disconnect is very real between the need for these commodities and how bombed out the juniors are as we try to explore for future supplies of these things. And yet the disconnect is there. Who's going to pay to advance these things? I think the stage is set for Ross Beatty set up last year. Explosive gains. He promised it last year. I think in hindsight, that was early. What I think it's there and it's very real. You mentioned geopolitics. You used the word geopolitics. And I have to think that we're gearing up for whatever's coming. We don't know exactly what it is. We can talk about energy metals. We can talk about batteries. We can talk about all that. But China and Russia getting together, confabbing the two of them, Xi and Putin, and gearing up for a a war economy in Russia. And I have to think that some of what you're doing in Montana can be applied to that. I know in our market here, our home market in South Florida, it's a big concern. It's very real. And of course, we have China just last week doing its biggest, most recent demonstrations yet, Taiwan. And of course, Russia and Ukraine. These are major players globally in the critical mineral space. All of the graphite in our phones was processed in China. Why? I don't know. There's no reason for it, but they bought up the supply over the past decade and the processing of that supply over the past decades. Nickel, it's more like two thirds for us. They're flooding the market with cheap Indonesian nickel. Interesting to note that it's very deleterious in terms of its energy intensity, carbon footprint, all that stuff. The broader market isn't yet distinguishing and the London Metal Exchange is not yet distinguishing the supply. Very grateful for the push out of the U.S. for friend shoring of critical mineral supply. And that, of course, includes Canada, EU, Australia now as well. Permitting mining projects in the U.S. is jurisdiction specific. Probably the most favorable jurisdictions, I would think, would be Idaho, Nevada, Montana, right where you're at. Is it just the size of the project and what you have on the ground, or is it the jurisdiction that factors into why you're physically there, Mike? It is geology first. The Stillwater Igneous Complex is known 
globally. It's one of the largest layered magmatic systems in the world, and it parallels the Bushfield complex in South Africa, which is where you were going a minute ago. From there, it's the mining history. And you're absolutely right that it is very much by jurisdiction, by location. Parts of Canada, parts of the U.S. are not mining friendly and are more difficult to build a mine in. Other areas, mining is, is understood, it's embraced, resource industries are understood, precedents are there. We're at a district that has been producing critical minerals since before they became critical. My ground produced high-grade copper, nickel, 100 years ago, late 1800s. Then, of course, chrome production during the war years from the broader Stillwater complex, subsidized by the U.S. government. And then starting in 86, palladium platinum production from our neighbor's mines. Again, a strategic metal and one that the U.S. recognized it needed to offset supply from South Africa when it needed catalytic converters. There's a long history of recognizing this geology for this kind of production, and I think we're the right people at the right place at the right time to deliver just that. And that South African model we talked about earlier, which I believe you're basing the Stillwater West project on, you've got a team member that has a lot of experience in that area. Let's talk about your VPX. Yeah, I'd be glad to. Danny Grobler joined us a little over two years ago from Ivanhoe. He was instrumental in advancing Ivanhoe's Platte Reef mine. He'd been there for 20 years. He brought with him the senior geologist, Alby Britz. Their presence at Stillwater has done a lot for us. I was with them their first time on site and everybody was delighted with the parallels they saw, the confirmation. Since then, it's been a matter of expanding it. The district they're calling on, the Platte Reef District, the northern limb of the Bushveld, South Africa. This is Ivanhoe's Platte Reef deposit, 8 billion pounds of nickel and copper, 95 million ounces of platinum group elements, right beside Mahalakwena, a uh, giant mine in operation since 1993 by Anglo-American, 15 billion pounds of nickel and copper, 152 million ounces of PGEs. The scale is staggering, but it's actually appropriate to the size of position we have in a related similar complex in Montana. And that's ultimately the kind of potential we see. It's a forward-looking statement, and it's a long way from our current 1.6 billion pounds, 3.8 million ounces. But if you look at our figures, potential is certainly there. And Danny Grobler could have joined any number of other companies. He joined us simply based on the potential and the parallels. There's another entity that joined you and they have about 16% of the company and that is Glencore. They've been wonderful partners and they've written a second check less than a year from writing the first check, which should say something. You're absolutely correct. They're 15.4% of the company. They've written us a little more than $7 million to date to get there. And there's a further funding built into that of 6.76 million in addition. They've been wonderful partners. We very much share the vision here. Technical sessions have actually been enjoyable. A lot of alignment on vision and ultimate objective. And frankly, they see potential here for what they're looking for, as do we. One of the investment strategies that I've pervaded for a very long time, 25 years now, is that you don't just take a look at one company and put all your eggs in that basket. You have yourself a basket of companies. If you can afford to risk, and I have to tell you, our audience in South Florida, for the most part here, especially in West Palm Beach, can't afford to risk, but you don't want to throw money away. But at these price levels, with what we've just heard, I would think that Stillwater Critical Minerals might be a, a fair risk and a good part of that basket that I've been talking about. I'd agree completely, of course. I would look to juniors that have been vetted by a major as being a key metric in your investing decisions. We've been through Glencore's process and they've chosen to write two checks here. We've attracted top talent from another great mine builder, Ivanhoe. All of this suggests that I'm not crazy. My core team is not crazy. The broader metallic group, of course, has really good depth in, in these matters. From here, it's building up. There's very little downside. We've got 20 billion US dollars gross metal value in the ground, and our market cap is currently about 20 million US dollars, one one thousand. There's a lot of room to grow this out. There are producing mines immediately next door to us. So the infrastructure is already there. Sabani Stillwater's good neighbor agreement is a template for the industry. It's a really good precedent on how to work in local communities. Their environmental record is impeccable. There's a lot to be done here. I guess to put a point on that, I recently met with both congressmen from Montana and both senators. And I have to say that their 
very bullish on critical mineral production and my neighbor's work. So I think the stars are aligning very nicely. So it's just a matter of time before someone like Glencore takes you out. We want to date before we get married, right, Ellis? Mike, it's always great to catch up with you. I've enjoyed our chat very much. Do reach out when you'd like to update our audience again, okay, sir? Very good. Absolutely. Thank you. Good to see you. All the best. I've been speaking with Michael Rowley, the president and CEO of Stillwater Critical Minerals, trading on the TSX Venture Exchange as PGE, in the U.S. on the OTCQB as PGEZF, and in Frankfurt as 5D32. Find the company online at criticalminerals.com. I'm Ellis Martin.